I'm on my way to get the best tasting Coca-Cola there is. And if you drink Coke, you know exactly where I'm going, your friendly neighborhood McDonald's. Because we don't need to talk to other humans anymore, let me get my drink from the machine. I also need to get some french fries because I bribed my boyfriend so that he would come and help me shoot this video at McDonald's. Cheers. As good as I remember. With that little caffeine break, I think I'm ready to finally dig into the real mystery here. Why does McDonald's Tap Coke taste better than any other Coke you can get? My first thought was, well, why not check McDonald's website if they spilled the beans on anything? And honestly, I didn't think I would find anything here, but they have like a super dense frequently asked questions page. So let's just type in like, why does McDonald's Coke taste so good? Oh, McDonald's, you, you are cocky McDonald's. Okay, they have a page on it. Here we go. It's not long, but let's see what they say. Okay, there are many reasons Coca-Cola tastes so good at McDonald's. We simply follow the guidelines, blah, 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 blah. Let's go to the second paragraph. This looks more interesting to me. The water and Coca-Cola syrup are pre-chilled. Okay, let's stop there because there's a bit more to this than just pre-chilling and obviously soda that's cold and crisp tastes a lot better than a warm soda. If you like warm soda, something is wrong with you. I'm, I'm sorry. But the reason this pre-chilling caught my eye is that the carbonation of a beverage super, super duper uber depends on temperature. When we're talking about carbonation, what we're actually trying to do is force little bubbles of carbon dioxide gas into a liquid like water. Now, whenever you read like a textbook about carbonating beverages, for some reason, they always say we try to impregnate a liquid with carbon dioxide, but that always just sounds so weird to me. So I'll just say we're trying to force in these carbon dioxide bubbles. And how much carbon dioxide we can sort of shove into water, this really depends on what temperature we're trying to carbonate at. And the colder the temperature, the more of that carbon dioxide you can dissolve in a liquid. This is when McDonald's said pre-chilling of the water and syrup. I was like, ding, 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 because temperature is so important for carbonation. So what McDonald's is doing by pre-cooling their water and also the syrup is they're actually able to force more bubbles in their Coca-Cola. And it's these bubbles that give Coke its sharpness or its bite. And I have another video that explains that these little bubbles, they actually trigger our pain receptors in our mouth, but we like it. And I'll put that video's link in the description if you're interested. And one other note on carbonation, since we're on the topic already, is that the tap or the dispenser at McDonald's has a huge, huge, huge advantage compared to Coca-Cola that you buy at a store that's in like metal cans or bottles. And that's because the McDonald's can carbonate the soda right before it dispenses it to you. Like it can carbonate it in real time. Whereas if you get cans or bottles of Coca-Cola, well, those have been sitting on the shelf for at least weeks, maybe even months. And these bottles, they're made up of a plastic called polyethylene terephthalate. Now I'm just gonna call that PET for short because terephthalate is like the worst word I've ever heard in my life, terephthalate. It, it, it's crazy to say and it's crazy to spell. My spell checker was going out of control writing this script. PET has one major flaw and that's that it lets the carbonation out as the soda is sitting in the bottle and it also lets the oxygen in the air into the soda. So it's, it's permeable to these gases. This is especially an issue with these smaller bottles, like a small bottle of Coke you might just drink yourself, not share with anyone, because there's a smaller volume of the soda inside a bottle that has actually a very large surface area for the carbon dioxide bubbles to escape. So a two liter bottle of Coca-Cola, which is what my boyfriend and I buy, like those ones that are about this big, we know over their shelf life, which is about 12 weeks, they'll lose about 15% carbonation, or maybe a little less if you're lucky. Where those smaller bottles, they will only have a shelf life of like nine weeks because otherwise they've lost so much carbonation, you're not gonna like the Coca-Cola in it. 
So McDonald's almost has like two advantages here. It chills the water and the soda to carbonate more, have more of that fizziness, but it also has the advantage that it doesn't have to package its Coca-Cola, which slowly would lose its carbonation. As soon as we dispense that Coca-Cola at McDonald's, we nearly immediately drink it. It doesn't lose that fizziness. Now, could another plastic be used? Of course, there's a ton of different plastics that can be used for food and drinks, but to find one that is a complete barrier to carbon dioxide, these are much more expensive than PET. So the soda and beverage industry kind of strikes this balance between a small loss of carbonation and a good price. Of course, you can also get Coca-Cola in metal cans. And what's good about metal about these cans is they are a complete barrier. They don't let any gases in, any gases out until you open it, of course. But have you ever noticed that when you drink even a soda or a beer or sparkling water out of a can is you can sort of taste the metal. Like once you put the can up to your lips and your nose, you do get these sort of metallic off flavors and off notes. And that's a huge drawback of using a can, right? It's much better if you pour that can of any beverage into a glass cup. The experience, the taste is much better quality. So when you buy any type of pre-packaged Coca-Cola, like a can, a bottle, it's sort of like a pick your poison. Do you want the metallic taste? Do you want there to be loss of carbonation? Nothing is perfect, except if you are a McDonald's where you have a tap that freshly carbonates the beverage and serves it directly to a consumer in a cup. Back to McDonald's FAQ page because I want to point out the next big clip. And this is where they say they set their water to syrup ratio, knowing that people are gonna put ice in the beverage. So smart. I really appreciate this because I love to get iced coffee, but I hate that at the end of the drink, it kind of just tastes like dirty water because so much ice has melted. When you drink Coca-Cola from any machine that is dispensing it at like a restaurant, what is actually happening behind the scenes is that a really concentrated syrup is being added to water and then being carbonated. Usually you add about one part syrup to three to six parts of water. But what McDonald's is saying here is that they purposely add more syrup. Why? Because they know that you're going to add a good amount of ice. And at the end of that drink, the ice melts into water, which means you'll end up with a more watery soda. So why not just know that it would be watered down and serve a more concentrated Coca-Cola? Brilliant. Speaking of water, which we have barely touched on, even though Coca-Cola or any soda for that matter is like 99.9% .9 water, like water is the main ingredient and it's actually the main ingredient in most foods as well. I mean, I remember when I was majoring in food science, all four classes I was taking at the same time, we were learning about water in food chemistry, biochemistry, food microbiology, and food engineering. That's how important water is. And not all water is created equally. You know this if you've ever traveled somewhere, tried the tap water and said like, what, why does it taste so different? That's because water tends to include different impurities depending on the local source. So actually water can taste quite different from place to place. This is exactly why McDonald's is sure to pre-treat and filter the water before it would ever enter any of their tap drinks. Otherwise the water would contain these impurities that actually leads to different off flavors and the water taste would vary from McDonald's to McDonald's to McDonald's. At the very least, McDonald's is definitely going to want to remove a couple compounds, for example, chlorine, because if you leave chlorine in, it actually will react with other flavor compounds in the soda, and this leads to a disinfectant taste. It like smells like a sanitizing agent. It's, it's really nasty, it's not good. They'll also wanna get rid of some of the water hardness or make it softer water by removing calcium and magnesium, which in your home, like on your shower head or your faucets, if you see like sort of white deposits, 
This is from the water hardness from that calcium and magnesium. But for a beverage like Coca-Cola, you want to control the water hardness because otherwise it affects the acidity of the drink. It can change things you don't want to be changed. The last compounds that should be absolutely filtered out, this is iron or any other metals because these are like the worst things to have in drinks. They're just super reactive. They'll react with other flavor compounds and make off flavors and aromas. Just a total absolute nuisance. Get them out of there. And by removing and filtering out these various compounds, what McDonald's is doing is making a very neutral tasting water that's consistent from one McDonald's to another McDonald's located 1,000 miles away because the water quality no longer depends on where you're getting your water locally, where it could taste different due to these impurities. They're making it consistent all across the board, which means whenever you get a Coca-Cola, no matter at which McDonald's, it should always taste the same. There is one last differentiating factor I want to talk about, and this is back on the FAQ page on McDonald's website. This actually did not cross my mind at all initially, but what McDonald's says is that they actually use like these extra large, extra wide straws. And once I looked, I was like, yeah, I guess those bad boys are bigger than an average straw. This means when you take a sip, you actually get like a bigger gulp of the soda in your mouth. And I think this could make it feel like you're getting uh, extra like carbonation. There's like an extra sharpness or crispness to that soda. Or maybe you feel uh, it's even more flavorful than usual. I think this would be particularly different if you're drinking soda out of a plastic bottle or a metal can where you're taking much smaller sips, which means if you do want a similar experience at home, you gotta go invest in some extra wide straws, I guess. If you enjoyed this video on the science of soda, next I would watch my video on the science behind chocolate.